Yeah, I want to take a minute to show you what I had over here on the table. I got some of my Black Rifle coffee. I got my homies, Kansas City Chiefs. I love the Chiefs. We're in a Chiefs hat today. Got some Blazer 115 grains, what we're going to be shooting. <clears throat> got my eyes and ears. Range finder here, a little inexpensive range finder, but it works really good. Needed something heavy to put on the table, so brought down a little bit of gold, some, some gold nuggets. Keep my deer skin down. Yeah, I was, in a, I was in Walmart this week and found this brand new company, Peters. High velocity, they had some 22 shorts. You know, I'm just pulling your leg. This is some old, old stuff. Thought you'd be interested in seeing it. Here's some more Peters high velocity. Yeah, 16 gauge, full box. I don't even own a 16 gauge. But, I do own a 20 gauge. Let's take a look at this 20 gauge stuff. Let's just pop one open. It's been a while since we've all got to see one of these. That's what they look like. Take a look at them. Turn it around here. Sure shot. Clean bore. Look at that on the end. Little cap on the end. Pretty awesome stuff from the days of old. Little history lesson for you younger folks out there. All right, let's get this sweet race gun. This beautiful 1911 Max and do some shooting. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Bob's Pistols and Pay Dirt. Got a beautiful little pistol today. This uh, is on loan from a friend. You probably uh, heard his name before. His name is Bob. Uh, we've got a Six hour model 1911 Max Michelle. We'll go into a little bit more detail about this pistol. It's a 1911. Uh, basically, Max Michelle is a uh, shooter for six hour. Uh, I believe he's still um, a captain of the six hour uh, competition team. In the, uh, I want to say the uh, 2001, 2002, 2003, somewhere in there. I don't know for exactly sure, but anyway, he was shooting in the uh, USPSA single stack division. And Sig came to uh, Max Michelle and said, hey, design this gun just the way you'd want it, etc. And uh, yeah, it is a sweet one. We're totally empty. Safety first. Magazine out. Visually, physically check it, it's empty. Okay, a little bit about this uh, particular 1911, if I can find you here. Uh, it's scalloped just a little bit differently on the top. Uh, this model does not fit in every 1911, standard 1911 uh, holster. It's a five inch barrel. It's got a really thin fiber optic sight in the front. A nice blacked out blade sight in the back. I believe these are Dawson sights. I have to double check that. Uh, it's it's a custom gun. It's it's beautiful. It's got front uh, cocking serrations. Again, this was designed for uh, USPSA single stack division, so it's indeed a more of a modern race gun. Um, it's got a skeletonized hammer. The skeletonized hammer makes it easy for uh, a lighter spring to be used uh, in the slide, therefore less recoil, shoot lighter loads, that type of stuff. It's got uh, really nice grips. These are G10 grips. They're made by Hogue, and it is a uh, what do they call it? A chain link fence style grip. It's got a lot of a lot of grippiness to it. It's got a huge magwell. It has a specialized trigger. It also has a really unique little. Whoops. All right. <clears throat> Had a short break there for a moment. It also has a really unique little trigger. Take a look at it. It's flat, flat-faced. And the um, idea behind this is whether you're at the top, the bottom, in the middle, whatever, it'll always feel the same. It'll be a direct trigger pull straight to the back. The actual trigger itself, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, there's uh, serrations on the trigger for, again, better grip. It has a little hole here. Sometimes those holes are for over-travel. This one is actually to set the amount of pounds of pressure so you can make it a little stiffer trigger or a little weaker trigger, whatever it is you prefer. So pretty awesome. It's got a beautiful check ring in the back. Uh, 
I looked it up. I couldn't really find how many per square inch. It looks like about, uh, I'd say, 20 lines per square inch in the back. And I would say 25 lines per square inch in the front. I even went to the SIG website to try to find that out. For you new shooters out there, or for you younger people, I would like to uh, make a recommendation. Okay? My recommendation is, when you're in school, study history. That's something that I did not do very much when I was in school. I loved science. I loved mathematics. I loved uh, psychiatry, sociology, that type of stuff. But, oh, I just thought to myself, what's behind me doesn't matter. Who cares about, you know, all this history lesson stuff? And uh, I just kind of made my way through it. <clears throat> the history, as you get older, I'll put it this way, as you get older, you want to learn more and more about history. Um, I'm going to give you a website. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I want to give you a website. It is American Rifleman website. And look up the trials of the 1911. Actually, the trials of the M911. And, uh, wow, just pages and pages of historical data. When it actually started. Why they wanted a bigger caliber. Uh, the Philippine insurrection of 1899 and 1902. After debriefing and going through all that, they realized they needed something more powerful than a 38 uh, revolver, 38 special revolver. So, you know, a lot of companies went to work on this. The trials went on for years. The model designs went on for years. This is when John Browning and uh, Colt uh, got together and made the first tilting barrel, um, and pretty awesome. So there was a lot of competition between uh, Savage, Luger, and Colt uh, to, get the, uh, to get the contract. The contract was actually when, when the years of trials were done and many guns exploded and all this kind of stuff. The contract was actually uh, completed on the 28th and signed over on the 29th of March 1911. Hence, the model of 1911 was born. Uh, and it's the most, hmm, I, don't, I don't know how to put it, it's the most, uh, it's one of the most influential up, it's one of the most influential designs and pistols in world history, okay? Interesting, I thought it was interesting, again from that article. Uh, the first order in uh, 1911 was for 31,344 model 1911s, okay? Kind of interesting. All right, let me throw my notes away. All right, a few other things about the Sig Sauer. Um, Max, they call it the 1911 Max, 100% uh, designed for competition. Uh, you can see on here a lot of the controls, they're all there, but they're all a little bit different. Uh, the uh, safety is, uh, is curved and smoothed a little bit. A lot of times people uh, say, well, the safety, you know, rubs on my hand or whatever. The intense checkering, the really large beaver tail, the competition trigger that's actually in here. Also, so right about here, my camera totally cut out on me. So I thought I'd give you some data uh, from a website. You can pause this and read a little bit more about the trigger and the hammer, etc. All right, got a magazine loaded. Six hour, 1911 max. Got a round chambered. Here we go. Pretty sweet. Load another mag. Got another mag loaded up. Let's uh, see if we can get a little pattern going. Well, 
it shoots different than a 45, a uh, lot different, but I really, really like it. Okay, let's load up one more. Okay, guys, we got last mag ready to go. It's a really, man, it's just, it's a sweet shooter. It's, uh, it's a little surprising. The trigger's just a little bit surprising. Um, it's just... I'm going to have to do a trigger pull gauge check on it to see what it is. It's got to be two, two and a half pounds, and just on a 1911, it just feels feels different to me. So I like it, though. So, okay, let's take a minute. Get a few shots up there. That little bitty target. Beautiful. All right. I <clears throat> just want to say thanks to everybody for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I really want to say thanks to Bob, my friend, for uh, allowing me to borrow his pistol. Oh, let me take these off so I'm not yelling at you. And, uh, yeah. Please do me a favor. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. Hit the little thumbs up button, leave a comment. It all helps grow the channel. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Oh, there's one other thing. There's a birthday coming up. Hmm. March 29th. Something will be 110 years old, if my math is correct. <clears throat> Maybe we can do a little tribute to that something in the next video. Happy trails. See you next time. <laughs>